The question is, sine 2x plus pi on 3 equals a half, and then you've got a domain provided. Let me ask you this. What immediately strikes you as the tough parts of this question? I can see at least two. Uh, okay, so you've got, you've got this, this guy over here, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lump it in with the 2x as well. What, what, what do those do to our graph? The 2x and the pi on 3. They change the graph in what ways? Yeah. So, so 2x will increase your, increase your amplitude from 2 to negative 2, and pi on 3 will shift it. Okay, so, look, three spaces downward. so let's, let's think about this. You're very, very close, right? So this pi on 3 is a shift. It is a shift, but it's actually, it's going to be a horizontal shift. Do you see that? It's close to modifying the x, so it's a left-right. It's also what we call a phase shift, okay? So it's a left-right change. Um, the 2x is a scale change, but it is not a vertical scale change. It's a... What's it going to do? Well, it's like, it acts like a y-axis, right? Hmm, interesting. So I'm hearing some different language here. No. Max said something which is... It's not the way I would have said it, but it's the closest. It makes it thinner. It, it compresses the graph, right? So if you want to think about it this way, if sine x normally looks like this, sine 2x is twice as frequent. Uh, yeah, did I draw that enough? Yeah, there you go. So it happens more frequently, right? So you're going to expect more solutions than you normally would. So there's the first issue. Just um, the word dilation <laughs> is used here, and I'm mentioning that explicitly. Yeah. It's the word that you're going to see. Okay, and that the dilation factor is what's happening here. Yeah, this has been something. I'm glad you caught me. This isn't something that's been added to. The new syllabuses. So that that dilation factor there, it's a in particular, it's a horizontal dilation. Okay, that's the first thing that I think is challenging. You've got you've just got all this stuff in the brackets, right? What's the other thing that's a curveball? What doesn't equal zero? What doesn't equal zero? Oh, you mean the equation? Yeah. So is this guy here? Okay, sure. I mean that's that's a thing that we need to watch for. But I'm going to suggest. That's fairly standard, actually. We even encountered that in the question we just looked at. See how this is not equal to zero? Happens all the time, right? There's something else that's on there, and you've literally looked at everything else, so what else are we missing? Sorry. Jermaine? Say it again. The restrictions. Look at these guys, right? This is not the standard restriction we're, not, we're used to. Not to 360 degrees or not to 2 pi. That's what you will get, like, 75% of the time. When we want to make things a bit trickier, um, we will change the domain on you. Okay, so we have to watch out for both of these. Now, I'm going to say this right from the outset. Um, there's lots of different ways to have a go at this question. I'm going to show you one of them. It's my favorite way, but if you're like, that is immediately confusing to me, and I have another way that I feel very comfortable with, that's okay. I'll come and talk to you about that later on. Okay? Here's what I'm going to suggest. It's my first thing. Um, I'm actually going to tackle the domain first. So that's a bit of a weird way to go. Um, I'll show you why that is a helpful thing to do in a minute. Okay? So see how it says um, naught is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to pi. Okay? I'm going to modify that domain so that it looks closer to what we've got over here, the thing that's actually in the brackets. Okay? So for starters, you might notice um, there's a 2x there. Right? You see that? So rather than saying naught is less than x, I want, or equal to x, I actually want there to be a 2x in there. Okay? So I'm going to take everything in the inequality and I'm going to double it. So the 0 gets doubled into 0 and the pi gets doubled into 2 pi. Are you okay with that? Do you agree that that's an equivalent inequality? <laughs> equivalent inequality to what I started with? Okay, I've doubled everything. So that's changed, but there's another thing to change. There's this shift I've also got to account for. Okay? So I'm going to add pi on 3 to everything in the inequality, right? So that gives me pi on 3, so less than or equal to 2x plus pi on 3, which is less than or equal to, okay, let's think for a second, 2 pi plus pi on 3. So hmm. Yes, which I guess would be 420 degrees. What's that in pi's? I'm trying to talk in pi's. 7 pi on 3. It's 7 pi on 3 because this guy is 6 pi on 3. Do you agree with that? And you added a pi on 3. So, this is what I'm going to call my modified domain. Right? Um, the question has a modified, uh, what we call an argument, this thing in here. Right? So I'm going to modify dom my domain so it looks more like that. Now, you're going to see why that's useful in a second. Now let's return to the question. 
Um, I'm going to think about a simpler version of this question, a question I'm much better at answering. Okay, let's just think about if we forget about the 2x plus pi and 3 for a minute, we'll return to it. Let's just think about sine of something equals a half. Okay, I think we should be pretty good to just answer this question straight off the bat. Can anyone tell me the two angles we should be expecting? Okay, so if we're thinking in degrees, we would say 30 degrees, and the, um, the reference sheet will help you there because sine is opposite hypotenuse. You can see the 1 over 2 there. I'm trying desperately not to think in degrees, so what are the equivalent radians? 30 degrees is? Pound 6, very good. Okay, now there's another solution, right? Can anyone tell me what the other solution is? You can either go for quadrants or you can go for the graph. Uh, it's going to be 150 degrees, which is 5 pi on 6 radians. Okay, maybe you just thought of that yourself. Maybe you had a friend who helped you. Okay, so here are my two solutions, just if I were looking at this basic question. Okay, now I'm going to show you why modifying the domain is so helpful. Okay, do you notice um, pi on 6 and 5 pi on 6? One of these answers is in my modified domain and one of them is not. Which one? is in the domain. The second, one. the second one's in the domain. 5 pi on 6, right? It actually fits between pi on 3 and 7 pi on 3. You can check this on a calculator if you need, or you can go back to degrees mode in your brain if you like. That's 150 degrees. This is, I think we said, 60 and 420. 150 is between those two. You okay with that? So you're like, good, that one works. The first solution is not in my modified domain. Can someone tell me why? Very good. So this is 60 degrees and above, pi on 3 and above, but this is 30 degrees. That's, that's too low. We're outside. Okay? So you're like, oh, this is, this is going to be no good. Okay? And in fact, I hope you can see, there are more solutions to this, right? But if you go more and more negative, go in the other direction, you're going to not get any of those solutions being valid. Do you agree? If, if this one is outside the domain, then everything below that will also be outside the domain. Is that okay? Yes, so I've got one answer, but I'm expecting there should be more, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each of these two solutions and I'm going to say there's a version of those that comes up later because sine just keeps on going, right? It just weighs around more and more and more. So remember, sine's a periodic function. What is its period? How often do you get a whole copy of sine? It's 2 pi, right? It's 2 pi. So if pi on 6 is a solution, there's another one just like it, 2 pi radians later. 2 pi radians later. So 2 pi is 12 pi on 6. Do you agree with that? So I'm going to add 12 pi on 6 to this solution, which gives me that. Is that okay? That's 12 pi on 6 later. Um, you'll get another one for the other solution too. 12 pi on 6 later, it's going to give you 17 pi on 6. Is that okay? So I'm getting more solutions. I could keep going if I wanted. There's an infinite number of these. Okay, okay so which, which of these is in my domain? Is this in my domain? And the answer is it is. You can check this, right? You can put the numbers in. Um, 13 on 6 is less than 7 on 3. So you're like, oh, this one's good. Is 17 pi on 6 in my domain? It will not be. Again, you can check this on the numbers. You've gone too far. Okay, so now I know not to go too far that way, not to go too far this way. I've got a solution here and a solution here. Is that okay? Now, I've done the hardest part of this, I promise, right? I've got two solutions. I just need to make them look right for my actual question. I'm not solving for sine theta. I'm solving for sine this, okay? So I'm going to pick back up where I left off. I'm going to write sine, sorry. I'm going to write 2x plus pi on 3. And I'm going to put in the two angles you just told me, the ones that work, the ones that are in our modified domain. So one of them is 5 pi on 6. And the other one is 13 pi on 6. These are the answers that will work. And now I just need to do some algebra. Okay, uh, I'm going to make this all in terms of pi on 6. So that's 2 pi on 6. Um, I'm going to subtract that 2 pi on 6 from both sides. So that gives me 2x here. What do I get for my solutions here? I'm going to subtract 2 pi on 6 from both of them. So 
that's going to be 3 pi on 6. Does that make sense? I subtracted 2 pi on 6 from that. What about the other one? Ooh. I'm subtracting 2 pi. This is just fractions, right? Yeah. This will be 11 pi on 6. Do you agree with that? You can see my subtraction. What's the last thing I have to do? I don't want 2x, I want... I want x, I'm going to divide by 2. Very good. So this one here gives me... 3 pi on 12, which I actually can simplify further. What's the other one? If I divide this by 2, 11 pi on 12. Very good. Um, I'll do one last simplification. That's pi on 4. Okay. That's a lot of work because this question had multiple curveballs in it. Okay. Um, I know sometimes you might get to this point and think, did I, did I do this right at all? When you are doing questions in your book, and when you're practicing, you do have the luxury of actually checking, right? When I do these kind of questions, I just do it all in numbers and then I do the <laughs> If you feel more comfortable doing this all in degrees and you can do that process, just please remember to come back to radians, okay? Okay, well, the, the big one is people forgetting to come back to degrees, right? Um, let's just quickly confirm that we've got this answer right. And if you've got your computer there, you're welcome to check this with me. I'm gonna put in sine of two, x plus pi on 3. There's my function, right? Um, I don't want all of it though, I just want part of it. I want to restrict the domain to naught is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to pi. Okay, so there's the part of the graph that I'm interested in, okay? Um, I want to know when does that thing collide with 1 over 2? Do you see that? So this is those two spots that I'm looking for, right there and there. And in fact, you can even see Desmos immediately tells us, whoops, there we go. It even tells it to you in pies, right? I keep on zooming out. Those are the two solutions that we found, pi on four and 11 pi on 12. Now, like I said, there are other ways to do this problem. You can think about the function as one that waves up and down more frequently, so you don't do the modified domain approach that I've done. Um, and that will also give you the right answer, but um, I wanted to show you the way that I know that a lot of people get the best success rate for the students I've taught, so hopefully that is helpful to you. Okay.